When we think of a fitness influencer, we typically think about somebody who's shredded and on pretty intense and strict diets, right? But what happens when a particular influencer decides to go all in on food? Today, we're talking about Stephanie Butterface, I mean, Buttermore, a PhD in cancer research turned influencer on the interwebs and the controversy specifically surrounding her all in journey. Stephanie Butterface, I mean, Buttermore was known as Jeff's girl friends. Jeff Nippard had her stunning body as a particular girlfriend, even though she's taller than him. Interesting situation. But she was also simultaneously a fitness model, claiming her fame through a, an amazing physique, honestly, like an actually pretty spectacular physique compared to a lot of fitness influencers out there. And a lot of people liked it. She was known for having a great degree of intelligence, but also a great degree of, well, just a physique. But in 2019, something terrible happened to Stephanie. She reached out to the internet talking about her struggles with the extreme dieting. She had experienced extreme hunger that completely disrupted her entire life as well as amenorrhea, which is the absence of menstrual cycles due to usually male nutrition. She was tired, tired of constantly dieting to a point of starvation, tired of being constantly fatigued, tired of being unable to sleep, and certainly tired of her hormonal issues. As she described it, she was a bottomless pit of hunger. And it was at this point that she decided to go quote unquote, all in. What does that mean? Well, essentially her program had now turned into throwing out all restrictions of food, eating whatever she wanted, whenever she wanted, until she was completely full. No matter how much food that took, whatever it took, she would eat it. And we're talking about eating huge amounts of food. I mean, she was eating massive quantities of, well, I will admit, whole foods, massive amounts of it. However, she was not afraid of eating some bullshit too. Donuts and ice cream were a commonality within her videos. Results? Well, she gained over 40 pounds in a very short period of time, changing her body composition from what people used to know as a generally healthy and lean individual to a little bit more of a chunky woman. She claimed, however, that this had restored her hunger cues and made her feel like a normal person. She regained her mental health as well as her menstrual cycle and everything was all good. But here's where the controversy kicks in. Butterface, I mean, Buttermore's journey actually sparked a ton of debate. On one side, she was praised for standing up towards a toxic dieting culture, especially within the female population and going against the grain and publicizing her journey to a heavier, more comfortable weight. But on the other hand, many people accused her of just binge eating and using this as an excuse to binge eat because she couldn't find a middle ground. She would just literally eat, again, as much as she wanted to until she felt full, which sometimes would be absurd amounts of calories. This would be considered disordered eating by just about anybody because it's swinging from one extreme all the way over to another extreme, which wouldn't really embrace any sort of healthy middle ground with eating. A lot of people argue that eating uncontrollably just until you were full would be an awful way to preach fitness. In fact, it would lead to mostly more people being unhealthy than fit, as fitness implies, have to have some form of discipline. Was this really the most ideal approach someone could come up with to stomp their hunger out? No, it clearly wasn't. I think ultimately what it just did was glamorize an unhealthy issue with food. It was clearly just a problem that she was having, yet she made it into this all-in program to justify her actions. Now, she's been very open about the problems that have sparked because she has gained a lot of weight. Emotionally speaking, it's not been the best for her mental health. And she's also faced a lot of backlash for not being the fittest person within the fitness industry. But she's also been very clear that her journey is not about aesthetics anymore, and she just wants to be comfortable and healthy, which this was the approach, the all-in approach, was what she needed to heal. And she, however, wasn't suggesting it to anyone in particular, but it was her tool to fix her issues. But with our experiences on this channel, we know things just aren't as they seem. This year at the Olympia, I actually saw Stephanie myself with my own eyes. I didn't see Jeff because he was too short for me to even look down at, but I saw her. And to be honest, when I saw her, I didn't recognize her at all. And if some crew wasn't around her making video content, it really wouldn't have dawned on me that this was actually Stephanie. This is what she looked like, or at least what I remember her looking like when she was doing the all-in approach. She doesn't look unhealthy, but she isn't as lean or nearly as aesthetic as she was when she was doing some modeling. Which, again, here is when she, in my opinion, was in her peak attractiveness. Her face looks pretty great, her body is conditioned, she has abs, and a good set of hips. And I think it's really important to look at her face in specific and see the differences from this point in time to the current point in time. But before we do, it's really important to note that Stephanie took a very large 
large break from social media. She decided to stop posting altogether and just separate herself from the phone. This could be for many reasons, expectations of people, including many people hating on her for her apparent look, as well as possibly some facial surgeries. So when she made her return to social media, it was a pretty big deal. She has a lot of followers and a lot of people were questioning where she was and if she was okay. She doesn't appear in any of Jeff's videos, so no one really gets to see her face. But when she returned, her face looked dramatically different. And she was obviously hyper lean and not on the all in approach anymore with some newly added tissue on her face. You can see her that her face is sunken in, her neck tendons are in full show, and this is something you usually see with bikini athletes at the end of their preps. Then furthermore, the pictures that were taken at the Olympia look even worse. You can see that she's absolutely bone shredded, and she quite literally looks like a photoshopped fitness model here. So I guess that she gave up on the quote unquote healthy approach of all in, making herself avoid these toxic eating behaviors, and has now reintegrated them into her life. Or maybe Jeff was unhappy with how she was looking, and he voiced this opinion before their wedding, and maybe she's been cutting weight just for that wedding. One thing to very clearly note is that she totally botched her upper and lower bluff and filler in her nose. She has chin implants, or at least it looks like it. She, of course, has the pillow cheeks. And to be weird about this, I mean, there's no, no weirdness to state other than what's in front of us. She was beautiful. And now she honestly is a little bit uncanny. It looks like a messed up situation. I don't know. It's almost like when she was flexing her ability to read so much because she's a PhD. And then when people found her Goodreads, it turned out to be all erotic content and novels. Yet she was, again, saying that she was reading so much because of her PhD. And uh, when you went to her Goodreads, all erotic content, <laughs> all sorts of fuck shit. Except this time, she's telling everybody that she's back to the Instagram and she's feeling better than ever. Yet here we see that she is probably the leanest she's ever been, almost damn near emaciated, and has a ton of facial reconstruction. And she might say, no, I don't have any facial reconstruction. Her fans might say this, but look at her face, dude. Like, it is completely different. This is not normal to have a face that, again, looks like this, where the original picture is her on this dock, the beautiful setting, to literally this at the Olympia, which is like, I don't even know what happened. Like, it doesn't even look like the same person, but I assure you, it is the same person. So here's the thing. Stephanie never had any issues with eating, or at least none that were real. She pontificated all of them herself because she was afraid of hunger and would lost her menstrual cycle because, well, no one intelligent enough was actually dieting her because, quite frankly, if you don't know how to diet, you'll lose your menstrual cycle, which clearly just shows that the PhD doesn't do much for her and Jeff's intelligence doesn't really provide a hand either. And then the obvious solution was to eat as much as you possibly can to feel better about yourself. I mean, this is complete valuable information. And I think it's so important to understand that this girl is motivating hundreds of thousands of other females and her motivations are probably not directed in the capacity that's going to actually be beneficial to anyone watching her. Because I guarantee if any female did what she did and just ate endlessly until they were content, they would not be the happiest with their body. And in that, they would not be the happiest person. Generally speaking, while you do have to sacrifice to have a good body, once you have a good body, you're generally a happier person because you were confident in your body. And the opposite can be said when you're not happy with your body, you generally are not a happy person. So I don't know. It's kind of crazy shit. I feel bad for her in one breath and in another breath I'm just like these are all self-created problems to be honest you just made them uh yourself these are all pontifications of the Jeff and Buttermore Butterface Buttermore uh cult or something like that if you like this video I do recommend subscribing to this channel it helps out a ton honestly so much if you could do me another favor it would be actually to join our discord group it's down below in the description it's a great place if you're into fitness and bodybuilding it is a great place to be it is a paid membership there is a free section but there's also a paid section. And if you decide to become a paid member, it does help this channel out tremendously and keeps me producing daily content. I will see you in the next video.